is othering human nature's deadliest instinct. And this has to do with, uh, what got me started on this was, was a new book. Um, Rob Henderson's uh, newsletter, in fact, turned me on to it. It's, it's called The Goodness Paradox, The Strange Relationship Between Virtue and Violence in Human Evolution. It's by a guy named Richard Wrangham. And he does a deep dive into the past 600,000 years of human evolution. And, uh, you know, says, you know, what's going on here? <laughs> how, did, how did we end up so different from chimps? I mean, you know, in chimp society, uh, you know, they're, they're our closest immediate relatives. We, we share 97% of our DNA with them. Um, in chimp society, violence is rampant. It, chimps live, you know, a life very much like what Thomas Hobbes uh, postulated uh, would be, you know, everyone's. So anyhow, this, this book, uh, The Goodness Paradox, is, is, it, it really illuminated for me the dark side of identity politics. You know, identity politics can, can go two ways. Uh, on the Democratic side, by and large, identity politics is let's identify people who have traditionally been oppressed and try to lift them up and bring them in, try to bring them into society, try to strengthen our bonds with them, try, try, to, try to help them out. Um, on the Republican side of identity politics, it's a whole different thing. The Republican side of identity politics is let's identify people who look different than us or pray different than us or lo love different than us and demonize them. Identify them as the other. Now, the, back to the chimp society thing, um, what happened between chimps and us is that apparently around 600,000 years ago, our immediate predecessor species um, developed language, which brought language to us. And language then changed our relationship to violence. In chimp society, the most violent chimp runs the society, basically. Has first pick of, of females, has first pick of food, you know, get, gets whatever he wants. He's the most violent, he's the dominator. But when we developed language, what uh, uh, Rangham talks about is that we also developed gossip. We develop the ability to communicate with each other, and, and we realize that cooperation as a survival strategy is more important than domination. That cooperation is absolutely vital, in fact, in our society. And this, this led to early hunting-gathering societies literally killing alpha males who tried to rise up and dominate the society or who tried to hoard what would be in a hunting gathering society wealth, which was typically food. They literally killed these people and for hundreds of thousands of years. And as a result, there's very few of us, like between one and 5% of us who carry the gene essentially for psychopathy, for being psychopaths or sociopathy. That the vast majority of us are not psychopaths it's only a very, very small percentage of us. And as a society, we, you know, and if you look at hunting gathering societies to this day, and this is, you know, in his book, and I, I write about this in, in, you know, in my new book, uh, The Hidden History of American Democracy, um, you know, about the Native American connection, uh, how our constitution is largely based on Native American societies. Now, Native American societies at first contact that we discovered were largely peaceful. There were some that were having wars, but they were wars against you know, other tribes. Within their own communities, though, they were highly democratic, small d democratic. So, you know, what this tells us is that, number one, we are wired differently from chimps. We are wired to be peaceful and loving toward our own group. And vile, and, but we can also be violent and, and, and uh, killers, you know, just brutal killers against people who are not part of our group once we believe them to be both an other and a threat. We use this, the military, for example, uses this. My dad, um, uh, you know, vol right straight out of high school in 1945, volunteered for, uh, to go fight in World War II. And uh, to, to his dying day, referred to Germans and Japanese people as Krauts and Japs, you know, racial slurs, essentially. Because that was pounded into him in basic training. 
This is this is why you have these Gulf War veterans who come back and, and Middle Eastern war, you know, the, the, from the George W. Bush's wars in the Middle East, Afghanistan and Iraq, who come back and talk about ragheads and use other kinds of racial slurs. Because in, in basic training, you have to convince these young men and women that the people they're going off to kill are both an other and a threat. And you have to essentially dehumanize them. And once you do that, you trigger this ancient part of our DNA that goes back to the chimps that allows us to kill. This is so deeply ingrained in us that it's the essence of all the Bruce Willis kind of movies, you know, all these revenge movies that are so popular, Liam Neeson, Bruce Willis, you know, we've all seen these movies. And, you know, the bad guy gets killed, right? Or the bad guys get killed in the end. And by the end, as the bad guys are getting killed, we're all like cheering, murder. That's wired into us. So here's the problem. While Democrats are practicing identity politics in a way that's trying to lift up minorities within America, and you know, a kind of identity politics that eventually renders itself unnecessary, because once everybody's equal, you no longer need, you know, you no longer need things like affirmative action. Whereas Republicans are using identity politics the way that they do in basic training to identify an other and to, and to claim that that other is a threat. Donald Trump, you know, Mexicans are rapists and murderers, this kind of stuff. And what that does is it triggers that ancient D part of our DNA that makes us capable of violence. It's why on January 6th, when, when Donald Trump identified Democrats as the others and Congress as the other and sent, you know, thousands of, of uh, his followers against Congress, they killed five people that day and they killed three police officers over the next couple of days as a consequence of their experience there. Eight people died. Trump triggered murder. And they're trying to do it again. In the third hour, I'm going to be talking about this, uh, you know, the guy who infiltrated the Klan for the FBI who, who uh, you know, is warning that, uh, you know, there might be some really serious times coming here. but. Anyhow, just, just uh, an FYI, the, the, the article, oh, and the way that we break this up, by the way, the way that we overcome the othering is by creating a giant us. And this is what we saw at the Democratic Convention. This is what I saw last week being there, is people of all different, you know, colors and, and uh, religions and disabilities and everything, you know, just all together, a giant us. That blows up the other.